Thanks for staying with us. Now, remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Way Show Africa One with the hashtag Ways, or you send us SMS or WhatsApp to 081 8038 Now, Dr. Nisochi, thank you so much for staying with us as well. You know, you, you, before we went on the break, you were talking about asymptomatic people. Um, mm -hmm. So there was, a, there, there was a, a, a study or a report that came to us, someone okay. that we know, she was asymptomatic, tested mm -hmm. positive for COVID-19. She was mm -hmm. kept in an isolation center. And I think after uh, about two weeks or so, she was tested again and the test result came back negative. negative. And they've done several tests. So she picked it up from a colleague that had traveled. So the reason I'm bringing this asymptomatic people, is this not looking somewhat like this people's immune system is put together? Or maybe they have already something that seems to be in their system that is fighting the virus and is not letting it to deteriorate. Okay. So um, at this point, we don't really understand fully the um, mechanism by which um, COVID determines who's going to be asymptomatic or symptomatic. Um, I'm sure you've heard of um, various uh, cases of those who exhibited um, extremely um, serious symptoms and those who really, like the person that you are um, describing, was asymptomatic, had no symptoms, but knew that they were positive and was just going about their um, business until they happened to have gotten tested. The thing about um, this disease is that there is a lot of mystery behind it, even up until this point. We don't know who it's going to choose as the um, kind of host that it's going to manifest um, extreme um, symptoms in. You know, when this whole um, pandemic situation started, at first the uh, medical community was, was saying that um, it's only going to affect really um, the elderly or those who are immune compromised. Mm -hmm. But now we are seeing that there are you know, certain cases of those who were absolutely healthy when they did come in contact with it, they fell gravely ill, they had to um, require intensive um, care treatment. So we don't know how um, this disease actually is going to work on every individual. We know symptoms can be um, zero symptoms in some people, there can be mild symptoms in some people, and there can be super severe symptoms in some people, okay? But we do know that for the most part, a good majority of people will um, survive it. But what we're worried about are those that actually it's going to affect um, very deleteriously. So I think the takeaway is because we don't know how it's gonna affect various individuals, we need to do the um, various things to try to um, maintain our health to the best of our abilities in case we do come in contact um, with this uh, disease. So I think another thing that we all need to keep in mind, because there's certain um, pillars of health that we kind of underestimate um, on a day-to-day -day basis how it actually impacts and affects the human body. So something else that I think that really needs to be brought to light is the effect of um, stress on the human body, okay? If you just think about on a day-to-day -day basis how stressed out each and every one of us are, it's actually kind of, um, in, uh, it's actually kind of um, incredible that we are faced with, such, with so many stressors on a day-to-day -day basis and we're still able to um, kind of thrive in the world. But with this kind of disease out there, we need to figure out um, How to kind of stress. mechanisms to, to deal with stress and minimize our stress. And the reason I bring this up, because when we are super stressed and chronically stressed at that, our bodies um, produce um, something called a hormone called cortisol. cortisol. Um, if we have those um, kind of mechanisms to help us deal and cope with stress. Okay, so, so just to bring sorry, to light, Dr. mental if health. You. If you can yeah. hear me, we lost you for a second. And it was sorry, around you. when you were talking about the, 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 um, the, 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 the hormones that your body excretes when you're under stress. Can you just yeah. repeat that again for us, please? Oh, sure. So I was saying when the human body is um, under a lot of stress, um, when you're under, when you're faced with uh, stress, the body produces um, hormones, um, one of which are cortisol. When the body has high levels of cortisol always um, circulating in the bloodstream, with those high levels high levels of um, cortisol, 
what that does is it decreases the um, immune response of the body. Basically, with all those hormones swarming around, um, the body cannot fight off infection the way that it should. So we want to always minimize our stress levels so that we don't have those high levels of those um, hormones that can actually be damaging over a period of time. So that's why I'm saying it's super important that we're actually focusing on how to um, deal with stress. We also focus on the um, mental health component of everything as well, because I think one thing um, I think many people recognize with all the different lockdowns and everything that was going on, people started to um, be really overwhelmed with uh, depression, with stress, with trying to deal with all those um things that were going on with this new kind of um, this new world that we're now faced with, with um, the COVID-19 pandemic. Awesome. Okay. What, awesome. What's the explanation okay. for children, the low numbers in children? What's the explanation for that? Okay. So right now we're still seeing cases um, with children having um, COVID-19. Children are not exempt from having um, have, ha being faced with this um, illness and with this disease. This is a disease that does not discriminate. I predict that with time, we're gonna start seeing more and more cases in kids. Um, here in the States now, there have been an increased number of cases with young children um, being faced with um, a somewhat mysterious um, like inflammatory illness that we are suspecting that is linked to COVID-19, okay? So with time, you're gonna start hearing about more cases in children as well, even in Nigeria. So there are some children presenting with mysterious um, illness right now that are presenting with um, um, like a, um, what we call like a Kawasaki-like illness a condition that affects the um, coronary arteries of the um, human body. It's actually affecting children right now. And this may be a trend that we are going to continue to see. So I don't think we should believe or think that this is something that young children are actually um, exempt from having. There are cases out there, and there likely will be more cases to come. Oh, it's, okay, so Dr. Nesochi, um I read an article concerning people that uh, are smokers, that have the, uh, the smoking uh, habits, and that mm -hmm. they, are they are very, very exposed and they are likely to contract if they come in contact with COVID-19, um, the COVID-19 case, they would likely contract it. How true is this? Okay. So that is another um, risk factor that anyone who is a smoker out there really needs to be aware of. We all know the dangers and risks associated with smoking. We know it damages um, the lung tissue. We know that it increases one's risk of um, picking up pulmonary or lung infections. And guess what? We know that um, COVID-19 likes to attack and affect the lungs as well. So those who, are, who, those who are currently smokers, they are increasing um, their risk to have attack on their lung tissue if faced with this virus. This is something serious that anyone who is a smoker needs to take heed to, and you should really consider trying to quit at this point because smoking, that's also a risk factor that um, decreases one's um, immunity and that's something that is damaging multiple organs in the body more so the lungs okay so, so the one thing you want to do just is to follow up on that the research also says that people that have smoked in the past so not just only people that are currently smoking but people that have smoked mm -hmm. in the past so does this mean that you know um their lungs are already exposed or so if it is true that their lungs are already exposed and all of that. How do they, I mean, what do they need to do to build up? Because we have a lot of people that have quit smoking. But this research is saying that whether you quit smoking or you're currently smoking, you are at risk of contracting COVID-19. Mm. So I think what they're getting at in the, whichever study that you are mentioning, 
obviously, if you have been a past smoker, there is some level of damage to your lung tissue, okay? If you are currently and actively smoking as we speak, you are actively damaging the lung tissue. So what does that mean? If your body does come in contact with this virus, you are at higher risk, obviously, than somebody else who has been a never smoker. So if you are somebody who has quit, then you should um, also focus on those other modifiable factors in your life to kind of help um, optimize your health and your immune system. If you are somebody who is currently still a smoker, this is the time that you really should um, consider quitting because it is no joke on the extent of damage that um, cigarette smoke can do to your lungs. Okay, so, okay, yeah. okay, okay. No, we have a question on, on um, question. WhatsApp. Someone is saying that, okay, so um, great job, Dr. Nesuchi. Can you break down steps to build or boost the immune system? That's the question. Okay, so building your immune system 101. Step one, like we already um, stated, get the recommended seven to nine hours of sleep nightly. You want to avoid sleep deprivation. So focus on your sleep hygiene, mainly focusing on um, making sure you put in place those things that can actually enable you to get a good night of restorative sleep every single night. All right. The next thing that you want to do, focus on reducing your stress levels. Like I stated before, when you're when you have um, super high stress levels, you can produce all kinds of um, hormones that can make your immune system even weaker. Um, third thing, we touched on this a little bit before, focus on your diet. Focus on trying to have a very well-rounded diet where you can have you know, your fruits, your vegetables, your lean meats, and avoiding those kinds of foods that can actually damage the body foods like um, processed foods, junk foods, those kinds of things can actually have a damaging effect over time that can actually lower your immunity, okay? Next thing, if you are somebody who is um, a cigarette smoker, stop smoking. <laughs> if, you do, if you do that, that'll take you a long way and actually add um, years to your longevity and life expectancy. The next thing that we haven't touched upon yet is the exercise piece, okay? We should all be obtaining at least 30 minutes of exercise five days a week. For some people, it may seem a little bit unrealistic for you, but that should really be a goal. Try to find something to really get the heart pumping and the heart going at least 30 minutes a day, some form of aerobic exercise. Many studies have shown those who are aerobically fit, they are the ones that tend to have, um, tend to have less um, infections. And when they do get sick, they are kind of um, able to um, fight off the infection better. So uh, even with um, COVID-19, what we are seeing is that there are a good, um, a num good number of those who do get sick with it, who have the risk factor of being obese, their outcomes are not as favorable with obesity. So really focus on getting in that um, exercise component to um, really kind of optimize your health. So those are the main things that you can do really on a day-to-day -day basis to guide you through um, your day, guide you through your life to try to maintain um, high levels of health. And I think one thing that um, is key is to, there needs to be this focus on preventive health. I know you said, um, you said that in Nigeria, not everyone goes to their um, doctor all the time until they're actually sick. My thing is, if you have symptoms of any sort, whether you think it's COVID symptoms or symptoms related to something else, I think you need to really go and get checked out. Don't let any symptom that comes your way really linger and wait till it's kind of too late. You need to get checked out routinely to try to really see where you are on the health spectrum. 
Wow. So You've my, been my, an my, amazing... My final question. You don't have a question again. <laughs> no. we, have to, we have to let Dr. Nesochi go. No, Thank just you one, just so one. much, Dr. Nesochi, uh, for your time with us today. We really, really appreciate your time. You were allowing me to go and go and you didn't, you didn't ask the question. I just want to know if the virus is ever going to disappear or we have to live with it. The do virus? You, yeah, do you think it's ever going to disappear? Okay, Dr. Nesuchi is still there. No how all of this is going to evolve. All we can really do at this point is take those um, preventive measures Absolutely. that we all talk about, you know, um, hand hygiene, making sure you're still routinely um, washing your hands. You, you have to go back to the basics, wearing your mask when you're in public. We're just awaiting for a vaccination or some kind of effective treatment because we don't know how long this um, virus is yeah. going to be here for. We don't know if, you know, it's going to be years and years down the line. We still have COVID-19 or how we it's going to We don't know how long it's going to last. So well, it's just going to be like malaria. To optimize our health. So and, just, um, let's just do everything to keep ourselves and boost our immunity. Thank you exactly. so much, Dr. Nesochi. <laughs> I think quickly I want to say that um, she's given very valid st uh, steps. I just want to say that for people that are physically challenged, that cannot do physical exercise, I would have loved for her to give us the alternative, but she's... Um, I think we can we can't have that anymore. We'd we'd probably need to do that, you know, that part. But I think there's some quite some exercises that you can perform even While in a stationary in state. Position, right? Okay. Yeah, I so think yeah, that would be important. Still, yeah. Maybe things like yoga and all of but yeah. anything that just gets your heart pumping. Yeah. Whatever it is. So all right, so thank you so much for watching. Now um, the show has been amazing and catch a repeat of this episode tomorrow at three PM. And um, in case you missed today's quote, here it is again. The four components to keeping your immune system healthy are good nutrition, exercise, breathing, and meditation. Dr. Netochi added sleep. Sleep is very key. So enjoy the rest of your evening. See you tomorrow at 8 p.m. Bye.